Hi Katharina, I'm happy that we're having this chat, partly from my guest, to your desk at the Hamburger Bahnhof, about your practice as a curator and your upcoming exhibition, Nation Narration Narcosis. The chat we're having is part of a video series called Narration and Embodiment, a project by the Cluster of Excellence and in collaboration with the Hamburger Bahnhof. And it's going to accompany your exhibition in a way as a thought extension into the theme and topics and we're talking to different artists and, and scholars as well who are all doing their own way of a presentation about their practice. And I've got the pleasure to talk to you about your curatorial practice at your exhibition and I'd like to jump in, in with a question about your practice that's always personally interested me, which is your interdisciplinary approach to curating. Your exhibitions and, and projects in the past also a range of collaborations across places and between humans or well, critters maybe even and areas of knowledge as well and but this is also very much visible in the preparations of your upcoming exhibitions already now that we've talked a little and i'm wondering how come you're you're taking you're always taking this more broader road you're not staying within one well, the classical sense in, in a very specific field of art history hi lotte thank you for the question and welcome to my office but i've studied german literature linguistics philosophy sociology and um, psychology and i am not um, formally trained as in art historian and um, maybe that's the reason why I've always been interested in different modes of world making, of storytelling, in the variability of meaning, of reality, of historiography, while I would say the art historical discourse is still very much or strongly influenced um, with this kind of essentialism and linearity which um, Edward Said called the defining mode of Western historiography and ethnography and which is still very present in, uh, let's say, in um, overgeneralizations in reductionism or in um, Eurocentrism. And um, 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 my interest is rather in um, what art historians hate, namely the fruitful moments in which denotative certainty is shaken by the alienation of modes of meaning, or you can even say by um, something like untranslatability uh, and um, um, I would describe my approach not only as interdisciplinary but um, as a hybrid um, cross-conceptual way of thinking which brings together um, different uh, um, or many influences um, which uh, is in line, for example, with uh, the thinking of Homi Baba, of um, Walter Di Mignolo, of Eduardo Viveros de Castro, and also my exhibitions tend to, um, to stage uh, scenes of dissensus in the sense of Francier, or um, constellations, to quote Walter Benjamin, or um, are carrier bags of many narratives in the sense of Ursula Le Guin. And I also prefer to work in teams which bring together different approaches and voices, just like the different participants I suggested and which so beautifully came together in both um, video lecture series for the cluster. And um, I do this in, to question um, hegemonic narratives and populist narratives, while I'm more um, while more central to me are the stories um, that artists, that art uh, works themselves or even things have to um, tell or, or evoke, and uh, which are more complex than those that the art historical or any historical discourse allows them to tell. And in particular, my next exhibition is also bringing together um, not only stories by human communities but by more than human or beyond human communities and yeah in this sense um, unlearning is of course very um, 
crucial for uh, broadening the perspectives in the space of thought um, which exhibitions are and um, for we have all been brought up to see certain things as important and to um, and to um, yeah to suppress everything else um, and taking of the blinders I think is very important and not everything has to be explained in the rhetorics of the existing paradigms of our um, cultural um, context we live in and it's precisely to be able to deal with, with, with what is um, going on in the world today and what um, our times demand, um, such as nationalist movements, as the climate crisis, as the extinction of species and um, other catastrophes, um, that we depend of different kinds of sciences and um, narratives coming together. Um, but at the same time, I would um, want stories, even if they're about um, horrific incidents, to be told in a resonant, a passionate way that um, doesn't paralyze um, audiences, but motivates them to stay with the trouble. This is the so-called boys' wing, which um, is mainly a number of um, boys' large um, environments, which are uh, um, on permanent view here. Um, we are very happy to have them, and this will be also part of the um, exhibition Nation Narration Narcosis. And the whole pro project, um, Collecting Entanglements and Embodied History, started in 2017, initiated by the Goethe Institute. And in 2019, um, I was uh, very happy to um, become um, part of this exciting cluster of excellence, um, temporal communities doing literature in a global perspective. And now we are colleagues in doing this. Yeah. And um, in 2019, we um, organized together a conference which um, happened here at Hamburger Bahnhof. Yeah, and you had lots of academics and scholars and artists there talking to each other, discussing the themes and topics, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In the upcoming exhibition now, you're curating together with three other curators. Yes. You're all working across places and countries and then also during a pandemic. Yes. How, how did you perceive everything initially? So, um, when um, in 2017 we were all here at Hamburg Worker and Bahn working on this exhibition called Hello World with 13 chapters and 13 curators, at basically the same time, around the same time, I was approached by the head of the Goethe Institute, um, Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand, and he asked me whether I would like to do an exhibition um, uh, on the then um, subject ghosts in Southeast Asia. And I said, um, I'm not really the one who should curate an exhibition in Southeast Asia. I would love to do it with colleagues who are from the area and who would like to do it together with me. And, and uh, at Hamburg Abanova, I was already working together with Grace Summer, so she was the first I approached. And um, then also two dear colleagues from Southeast Asia, which I always wanted to work with, which is um, Kritia Gavewong from Thailand and Jun Jack from Singapore. And we um, respect. We looked into um, four um, museum collections, mainly the ones which are under the, the umbrella of um, national gallery um, uh, subject, mm. except for the one in Mayam, which is a private collection and which is telling counter histories. And um, this is also the thread we are working for. We were looking into stories, untold stories, counter um, histories which are visible in the collections or not visible for specific reasons um, and also how um, history is embodied in this um, collection but also how it is um, uh, reflected in the specific artworks and in the individual artists. So we are also talking you've about stories or letting the artworks tell their own stories. You've discovered quite a few things along the way, didn't you? Because there's nothing, especially because of untold stories, you can't really read yourself too much into the topic. So yeah. the working together was really key in this, wasn't it? Yeah, but the interesting thing is that my colleagues also wanted to um, make this untold stories public. For example, yeah, Grace. Tell it. Yes, Grace Jam uh, Zambo, who is um, um, a freelance curator, but um, 
um, works with a collection of the Galerie Nationale um, Indonesia in Jakarta, wanted to tell the untold story of, uh, of um, some specific um, exhibitions which were happening there mm -hmm. and also the entanglement um, with a more um, wider or global art scene in several biennials and um, so she was really happy to have, to have the opportunity through this uh, project to um, look into this and also it was interesting for the um, three colleagues to work together. So lots of them have worked uh, with um, uh, curators or museums in the West, in the so-called West, but um, working together in the area is not that common. I'm just standing and looking at a work by Joseph Boyce, and it's part of the exhibition Starting from Language, that centers around his view of language and narratives, and also his idea of language as something that every member of society can use to reshape the idea of society as well. So he sees it, sees it as something sculptural, and this is part of his theory on the social sculpture as well, which makes me think, considering your upcoming exhibition opening in November now, is this something we consider part of your exhibition as well? So Boys is um, one of the starting points of the exhibition. The other one is, of course, the notion of nation, which is in the name of the National Gallery. And um, um, the Boys um, idea or concept of the social sculpture is, of course, one um, one attempt to um, to think about society and togetherness and conviviality and how um, a collective could work. The other one is of course nation and the nation state. And so these are the framings or the starting points for discussing different forms or other forms, how we could think about communities, collectives, maybe about kinship, about, um, yeah elective affinities um, and thinking about also um, communities beyond the human. So boys is one of the starting points but not the center of the exhibition. This specific work, how come, how, how, how are you connecting this to you? I'm connecting this um, with the other work we just saw, which is Tello or Anschlitt, which is um, made of fat. And the other one uh, I will bring in, in this room only Tello and the Felt suit because it's very interesting and specific for his thinking about material and being really concentrated on one material. And both Fett and Felt um, are connected to, to warmth and energy in this way and also creativity, which is super interesting. And when we are talking about communication and embodying and embodiment of uh, um, narratives and narrations. This is, of course, a talking material very much, and so the whole um, idea of embodiment is, embro uh, is is broadened in the exhibition. So we have um, the embodiment of materials in materials uh, of um, narratives in materials. We have also. Um, of course, people who are talking and do narratives, we have states who um, uh, um, uh, are based on specific narratives, but we also have um, stones, for example, who tell their own narratives, and we have um, this kind of, um, I think how Chile Mbembe is calling it, this journey protagonists, like um, um, migrants, travelers, tourists, um, dandies, whatever you, the flaneur maybe, um, but also this these figures which are um, uh, traveling um, between different worlds, like we have several ghosts and spirits which will be in this exhibition. We have shamans who are talking um, to the other worlds or connecting them as translators. And then we have boys who is considering or is producing this legends which why people are considering to be a shaman, which he perhaps would never say of himself. Mm -hmm. And it's all told in this object. In yeah, because it's really interesting yeah. that this, the warmth and the felt is really um, very much connect, connected to, uh, to him with the, the spiritual realm and the um, creativity with it, which is basic for um, creating a society. Yeah. It already sounds very much like a big bag of stories, oh wow, many, many kind of stories. 
that you're telling within this exhibition. And this is also one of my last questions, because um, if, if we're thinking about exhibitions as a medium and as a bag, what's the essence? And this is very difficult because it's such a broad question, but what's the essence of, of your exhibition? What does it want to tell in total? Why? Or maybe that's not even the point. Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's going to be a very plural um, vocal exhibition, and that's the point, because I really want to broaden the linear um, narrative essence. of art history, which I think is really boring, and it's mainly the Western art history, and um, also the questioning what is contemporary, what is contemporaneity, which is always bringing together the past and the present and the future and also different voices which are looking on um, at each other. So also the objects are not merely objects, they are things, so they speak for themselves. And also the artistic uh, works are speaking for themselves. And, um, and also we are bringing together four collections with very different backgrounds. We are bringing together, we are four curators who are thinking very differently. And um, it was really, yes, it was really interesting. And also bringing these objects to speak, as I mentioned, it's, um, also we have stones and we have, I don't know, we have um, termites. So it's going to be a pluri vocal or uh, um, multi perspective um, exhibition yeah. very much. Yeah. Yeah, not just one essence, but many, yes. many different voices. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. very nice staying with each other. Exactly, <laughs> and uh, staying in trouble. Lotta, how would you implement Donna Haraway's um, staying with the trouble to your work and um, maybe even Ursula Le Guin's um, career by Cleary? Yeah, yeah, just talking about exhibitions as a medium and as a bag as something that uh, holds so many stories. I think it's really interesting to start with Le Guin in that way as well and for writing my own papers, studying. Because being in academia, it has to have a start and an end, obviously, but seeing it as something that doesn't have to be written linear and that just holds something for myself, I find that fairly calming, to be honest. It takes out the pressure a little bit. And also, in a similar way with Donna Haraway and the Titus thing, the trouble, trouble for me, and this is may seem counterintuitive, but the way she defines it, it means stirring up things. And the idea of that, of constantly stirring something up, keep asking questions and doing this in all areas of my life, I find that quite interesting. It doesn't mean conflict at all, it just means being fully present in the moment and trying to appreciate what you are looking at at the moment. So, yes, that's for me a fairly personal answer. <laughs> But that's a very good um, final uh, remark in regard to our exhibition. And um, yeah, yeah, I wanted to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for answering all my questions. So, <laughs> so looking forward to the lecture series. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>